is Hard Parking, sponsored by Wright Honda and Wright Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys know I'm your host, Jay Finning. Back, we took a week off, decided not to do Labor Day last time because, first off, I was out of town. We went up north to visit my, my mother, my brother, my cousin, my other cousin, my other cousins, my aunt. And Yvette and I, we've done this trip three years in a row now. And we just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. And, you know, I have a small family. And since the, I wouldn't say, I, maybe it's the timing, but, you know, when my father passed in October of 2020, I sat back and I talked to one of my cousins that we meet up with every time we go to Minnesota. And my family gets smaller. And so I don't know, I don't remember who exactly said this. But a lot of people use this phrase. You kind of measure your life out in how many summers you potentially have left with those people that you love, that are your family or your closest friends. And every time we go on vacation, like Yvette and I, you know how we went to Europe at the end of April and early May. When I got back, I just sat here and thought, man, that was great. And we, we travel, we travel more than a lot of people. We don't take these multi thousand dollar trips, but we go places this weekend. We're going to Vegas for a night to celebrate one of our good friends birthday. And we talked about maybe not going and saving a little bit of money. And we never spend that much money when we go and there's going to be maybe 30 people, but those are the things to have friends, to have family. To have a support structure to where you have those options, to where you have to decide what you're going to do this weekend. I'm busy. I'm very busy. Speaking of this weekend, we just did Zeke's birthday party. He just turned six. We had 30, 40 people over. Great time. And one of the things that I've decided is it's okay to shuffle things a little bit. It's okay to take Labor Day weekend off from the podcast. You guys know how I roll. I've been doing this every week since 2021, since January of 2021. Before that, this podcast came out every two weeks. So we're looking at 2019. So that's six years. And this podcast goes where you guys and myself are willing to take it. Let me tell you guys something, and this is kind of fun, interesting. It's the truth pill, and I'm fine with it. So the last episode, remember I opened up thanking everybody for allowing me to be who I am, and I know at times it's hard, and sometimes I'm going to say things that you don't agree with, and I'm going to have guests on that say things that you don't agree with, but that's the nature of this show. So that podcast came out on a Monday. Later that Monday, I received a review, and the review is fine. Because at first I read the review, and I was like, what? You don't know me. You don't know my podcast. But through every level of feedback, whether positive or, I won't say negative, I'll say constructive, there's always a, a shed of truth. If someone says, I went to your restaurant, and the service sucked and the food was cold and I'm never going again. And my friend and I have gone once a month for the last three years, but we are done. You have to take a look at that and you think, huh? So you've came to my restaurant for three years. I think that's what I just said. I don't even remember what I just said. And you have one bad experience and now you're done. So let's find the truth in that. The truth in that is, do they have bad service? I don't know. Was the food cold? Maybe. But what we do is we look into the food and we look into the service and we move forward because we may have lost that customer that had been coming to our restaurant for the last three years, but that presents us an opportunity to make sure that our service is good and to make sure our food isn't cold. And as we move forward with that, that's what we build on. 
so that the next review is a better review. People leave reviews for two reasons. They just loved it so much, or they hated it so much. I used to be that guy. When my wife met me, we would go out, and I would be the guy who would write a letter to the hotel, to the restaurant. Because through those letters, if someone's going to take the time to type out, because I don't want to handwrite anything, my hand's going to cramp up, to type out a letter and submit it, that's going the extra mile. That's constructive. So I received a review, and the review was right on time. Because remember, I thanked you guys for allowing me to be me, allowing this show to be this show. The review was titled, Stick to Cars. In fact, I think I'm going to title this episode, Stick to Cars. In fact, all that and more are coming up after this word from 4 Online. I will get to that review. For over a decade, 4 Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. The truck products cover everything to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. Need a wheel and tire package? Head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. Visit them online at 4 Wheel Online. So before I talk about a little bit about my trip to Minnesota and the rental car that I had, I know you guys love my rental car reviews. I'm going to talk about the title of this episode, Stick to Cars. So this is the second one-star review that I received. And if you've listened to this podcast over the last four or five years, you would know that I don't, I mean, if you want to give me a review, if you want to give me a five-star review, that's great, but really mean it. I think I'm always a four-star review guy because there's always room for improvement. And if this podcast was that great, it would be more successful. But this is a one-star, and this is, I think, the second one-star review that I've had in the last six years. But I appreciate it. It says, I hate it. This is a reviewer, the name. If you want to read it, you can go to Apple and, and see it on review. It came in on August 20th, so right around the time I'd released the last episode. By the way, I just looked at a calendar and realized that it's still on March of 2024. And I look over it all the time. And it's got a car on it by Kuya Automotive, sponsor of this podcast. And I just look at the NSX and then I look away. I never look at the date below it. I just noticed right now it is September 8th and I'm looking at a March 2024 calendar. That tells you how busy I am. That tells you how scattered I am. So this review came on, a Mar- on uh, sorry, August 20th. And you could tell this is based on a few recent episodes. I hate when politics enter the chat with idiots out of their depth, left or right. You sound stupid talking about things you obviously know nothing about or you don't know about. I started listening recently and it's not that entertaining, but somewhat informative. Fair enough. Pick a lane and try to succeed at that and not give voice to people talking out of the side of their neck. Not here for election talk on a Axis TV level podcast. End of review. So I'm gonna need a little help. I have no idea what Axis TV level podcast means. I don't know if it's a compliment. I don't know if it's a put down. I don't know what that means. But what what I will say is I do appreciate this Because I know that this podcast can be all over the place, but that is also by design. So you guys remember, I used to call this, and it's still written in some places, this is the non-automotive, automotive automotive podcast. Which means I, and my guests, will talk, and do talk, for the most part, about just about anything. Usually family-friendly. This isn't Joe Rogan. This isn't things that we say for effect that we can go viral on social media. It would be nice. Sometimes I get on my soapbox. Sometimes I let my guests talk about whatever. 
And if it gets uncomfortable, I kind of steer it a little bit left or right or whichever. But one of my favorite podcasts ever, and I haven't talked about this in a long time because I haven't had the time to really listen to them like I used to, but I'll bring it up again for the purpose of this review and the purpose of this subject matter. The Dan Lebatard Show with Stu Gatz. Used to be on ESPN. They're on their own thing now. Incredibly successful. And I would always get a little bit jealous because they have the host, the co-host, and a whole room full of producers. And they're talking about things. And they're laughing. But it's primarily led by Dan Lebatard. And he's a sports guy. There's a lot of people who love him. And there's people in the sports world that don't like him. And one of the things that when he starts talking about Colin Kaepernick and taking a knee, a knee, when he starts talking about George Floyd, when he starts talking about police brutality or some of the social, I guess, wrongdoings out there, you know, the humanistic approach in and around sports, the feedback is always stick to sports. And so when I get a, a review that says stick to cars, at first I'm thinking, you don't know me. You don't know this podcast. And then I'm thinking, going back to the restaurant thing, this is an opportunity to maybe get back to a certain way or not. It is feedback, which somebody took time to do, which I appreciate. And in a way, it's a compliment because this is the non-automotive automotive podcast. And I have faithful listeners who don't like the politics. I am not a big political person. You would think so listening to this podcast in the last six weeks, but there's a lot of stuff that's happened. And like I've said before, when July 13th happened and I looked on my phone, I go, holy shit. I think someone just tried to assassinate former president Donald Trump on national TV. That became very interesting to me. And you guys know that when I'm interested in something, I take a deep dive. I try not to get too tunnel vision. I try to do research as much as the media machine allows me to do. And I try to come from a point of education. I don't know if my guests do the same when we have those conversations, but there's certain people I like having on because I know they're more comfortable talking about certain things. Whether it's the Houston Takieta shooting, what was it, in February of 22 now? I think it's February 22, maybe 23, but I'm thinking 22. Where Brian Sales of the See Through It Warriors Vision podcast is typically my correspondence for gun violence and all things like that. Because we both like cars and we talk cars, but we talk about those things. And so the, the disclaimer that I always put out is, I don't know. The, I'm just At the end of the day, I'm just a guy with an opinion. And I would like to think I probably represent a vast majority of people out there that also have their own opinions. But unlike a lot of people who just flat out don't have the time, myself included, typically, I do a deep dive into things so that I try to come from a place of education. But I'm not. We've said this before. Our society right now is a society built on absolution. And if you're being honest with yourself, you'd realize there's no such thing. It's not red pill versus blue pill. You know what causes a purple pill? When you mix blue and red together, but no one wants to talk about the purple pill. Everybody wants to be the red or the blue pill. Ford, Chevy, Republican, Democrat, MAGA extremist, leftist liberal, Antifa extremist. But Normal people in America don't represent that. They represent everything in between. On a 1 to 10 scale, most people are somewhere between 3 and 7. Now, I didn't pull that from anywhere. I don't think that's a statistical fact, but it's a common sense fact. So... I'm going to talk about politics if I want to talk about politics, and you can choose to listen, or you can choose to skip that episode and come back the next week and listen to World Yo-Yo Champion, or listen to actor Mr. Reggie, 
He's going to be on the podcast. He's been on the podcast. They're listening to actor Noel G, who's known for Fast and Furious for car people, but he's known for so much more other than that. And I'm going to sit back and listen to him preach the faith and the word of God. And no matter how many times I try to steer him back into stuff that isn't religion, because I don't talk about religion, just like a lot of people don't talk about politics, because I don't take a deep dive into religion. But if my guest wants to talk about religion, I'm going to let my guest talk about religion. And then just slowly try to reel the podcast back to where it needs to be. And one thing I will also say is, again, I wasn't mad at that review. But just like the Dan Levitard show, which is infinitely more successful than this podcast is probably ever going to be, he gets out there. And it takes either you're hooked the first time you listen to this podcast, you hate this podcast the first time you listen to it, or you listen to it over the course of a week or two and decide that you love it, like many of you do. You love the variety. And there's people who pay every month to support this podcast. I'm not talking just the business sponsors that I reel off at the end, but the personal Patreons. Some of them have very different worldviews than I do, but they still reach out and say, I love what you're doing on the podcast. Keep it up. I love your show. I love what you talk about. I love that you're not afraid to talk about things that everybody else typically doesn't in your space. Because if this was a political podcast, we'd be talking a whole lot more politics. But then again, I wouldn't be doing it because at the end of the day, I don't give a shit. But I give a shit when I see stuff that I don't agree with or things that look like, oh my God, you're trying to pull the wool over Americans' eyes. And I'm not saying who was doing what. That's my observation. And is my opinion going to change anything? Maybe, maybe not. But it changes stuff for me. It opens my eyes. And by opening my eyes, hopefully I help open your eyes. Just like when, if you're another podcaster, because I talk to other podcasters, they say things that open my eyes. Very insightful things. So, we're going to stick to cars until we don't stick to cars. So you guys know it's been a while since I've done a rental car review. That's one of those parts of this show that if due to the polls, many of you said it's your least favorite part of the show. So I stopped doing it. But then again, I don't always rent cars. I don't travel like I used to. Remember when we started this show, I was literally traveling every week with the exception of the major holidays, um, New Year's. Christmas, maybe stayed home, Thanksgiving week. Every other week, traveling. Sometimes it was every two weeks when it wasn't every week of the year. So a lot of rental cars, a lot of alone time in hotels. So before we went to Minnesota, my wife and I recently, so I like to rent the car, get to go pick the car that I want within reason. I try to pick something that's either A, comfortable that I've had before, or B, something different, but it still has... That's right, CarPlay, because I'm an iPhone person. This time my wife says, why don't you let me pick? Let me see what I can get. Through her job, Hertz is usually cheaper than what I get through Enterprise or National. So she picks, we have Hertz, we travel to Minneapolis, get there super late, and she is five-star gold, I think that's what it's called, walk to the Hertz station, or the Hertz garage. Can't find a car. We're at the wrong terminal. Now there's rental car companies at both terminals. There's two terminals in Minneapolis. But when you get there late, the people traffic pushes you toward terminal one instead of terminal two where we landed. And so we reach out to the Hertz people because they see us walking around aimless. Because I'm walking up and down. I'm looking for a car to grab. But I don't see her five star gold it's just member and president circle so guys like hey can i help you guys i go okay yeah so we're here to pick up a car last name's finning oh i think he knows because you just know who's coming in you guys are at the wrong terminal but that's all right i have your car for you I said okay very good he goes okay 
go out and it's in, I forgot the, the, the space. It's in I-5, right? It's the opposite side that we were walking and looking. Go figure. So as I walk, I'm like, ooh, I like this. I'm looking at the front of all these cars that say reserved on them. And as I get a little further down, I'm looking and it's like, oh, 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 Subaru. Okay. Subaru out back. Okay. Now, I'm not going to trigger you guys because I know some of you drive Subarus. One of my dearest friends, Rebecca. Do you listen to this every Tuesday still? She has a Subaru, but she's a woman, so that's okay. Don't be triggered. I'm looking at it like, okay, it's an Outback, all-wheel drive, whatever. Of course, Subi. And now my wife's a little sensitive with certain things, so I don't make any remarks about your stereotypical Subi owner. Because number one, it's not true. I know tons of guys who have Subarus. But it's also known as a specific person's car, stereotypically. So the next morning before we go up north, it's like a three-hour drive up to my, uh, my cousin's. We're getting in the car, and I make a comment about it. We're driving. I forgot how it came up. I think I was listening to a podcast, and something came up with a Subaru. And, I, and oh, my wife goes, oh, I think my, I have a customer that has this car. I started chuckling. She goes, well, why'd you laugh? I go, well, stereotypically, they're known as the lesbian's car. And she goes, oh, I think she might be gay too. So we both had a kind of a chuckle. But I was surprised because I don't want to say that when we picked up the car because maybe she says, oh, that's messed up. So then we get to my cousin's house and we pull up. And I go, hey, man, check out my rental car. And he starts laughing. He chuckles. He goes, oh, is there a rainbow sticker on it somewhere? So yeah, the Subaru Outback, that's what it's known for, but that's not necessarily what it is. This was a 2023, and looking it up online, first off, it's considered an SUV. I didn't know that. You may have known that. Did you know that? I just call them wagons. Do We just don't call anything wagons anymore. I just call it a crossover wagon or a crossover mini SUV, but it's barely an SUV. But when you look it up online, like on Edmunds, where I'm at right now, it's just Subaru Outback SUV. But I had the limited edition, which is nice. It was nice. I mean, it was nice. You know, the radio was nice. Uh, the seats were nice and comfortable. It didn't have a lot of pep, but it was all, all wheel drive, which is what you need in Minnesota also. The entertainment system was fine. It was Android forward. And so you would see the little Android robot when you'd go to your connections and the CarPlay thing was there, but then it wouldn't work. And then I remembered with many of these vehicles, they want you to use wireless CarPlay. Even if you don't plan to do wireless, you still have to connect it to the Bluetooth of the vehicle so that you can plug it in as wired. Because so what happens is you plug it in, it says, do you want to use CarPlay? I said, yes. But then it doesn't work because it wants you to connect wirelessly to it, the Bluetooth even though you, plan, you don't plan on, on using Bluetooth. Because then it asks you, would you like to use this wirelessly? And I said, no, I would not. But you still had to connect it to Bluetooth for it to work. So once I figured that out, which took a couple of hours, then it was fine. But the first few hours driving up north, I was kind of pissed because I'm sitting there kind of looking down on my phone, looking up, okay, here's the turn. It's turns coming up, turns coming up. And it, by the way, if you don't use the correct app on your iPhone, there's Apple Maps and there's Google Maps. I obviously, I have Waze. I always use Waze as well. But sometimes when you're typing an address, if someone texts it to you, Waze is never the preferred. Which, by the way, on all in podcasts, they had said something like Google pays Apple a crazy, I want to say like $80 billion to be the preferred search provider in Maps. Look that up. It's something, I mean, I could look it up right now, real time, but I don't want to, but it's something astronomical, like $80 billion to be the preferred map app, which makes sense. It's whatever it is, when you click on, if I text you an address and you click on it, it's going to, by default, open up Google Maps, not even Apple Maps, Google Maps. But one of those two maps, apps, don't tell you the information you need. So as you're Cruising up to an exit, it doesn't say exit 746 Front Street. 
It just has an arrow. Like you're going to turn soon. And if it's one of those exits that have a north, a south, and then it's the exit to another road that normally doesn't have its own exit. So it's kind of one of those triple thread exits. Those directions aren't going to say take 46 north. It's just going to say turn right or turn left. So be thinking about that if you're using the map apps on your iPhone when you're traveling, especially when you're on vacation. Because my passenger isn't very good at looking over and it's like, oh, well, let me help you with that. Let me look it up on my phone. It's TikTok. It's Instagram. It's, hey, I'm hungry. We should go eat. Okay. Can you look up someplace to eat? Because I'm kind of driving. So anyway, the infotainment center on this thing was cool. It was fine. The Subaru was fine. Would I buy one? No. But given the trip, would I rent one again? Not intentionally. But if they give one to us to use, the Outback Limited was definitely fine. Especially going to a place like Minnesota. Now, obviously, it's not snowing. But I knew that if I needed to, I can go off-road and go through mud and probably do anything I wanted in the Subaru. A few other things about the trip. As you guys know or may have seen, Southwest Airlines is moving away. I don't know when. Again, I could look it up, but I don't want to. Moving away from open seating. So at some point, maybe in January, you can buy your seat like any other airline. And I'm wondering what that's going to do. I guess they're struggling right now anyway. So of all the ways to make a buck, maybe start charging people for things that everybody else charges them for and stop giving everything away for free. But the frustration for me with Southwest, unlike any other airlines, is you have to check in or pay extra to have it checked in for you. You have to check in 24 hours in advance and you have to sit there and hit refresh on your phone. And once it hits 24 hours, you hit check in. And depending on where you're going, even if you check in in the next six seconds of when the clock flipped, you could still be at the bottom of A or you can be in the middle or the back of B. And if you've never flown Southwest, I'll give you a quick rundown. Southwest seating is one through 60, six zero. A group is one through 30. A group is 31 through 60. B group, one through 30. B group, 31 through 60. C group, D group. I don't think there's an E group. But what happens is if you have A1 preferred, I think it's what it's called. A1 preferred? Or is that just a shitty steak sauce? Maybe it is A1 preferred or 1A preferred. Then you're guaranteed to always get an A slot, whether you check in immediately or you just sit on your ass a little bit longer and you don't check in till later. You're guaranteed an A slot because you've flown enough or you've paid money to be guaranteed an A, a slot. But usually it's because you've flown a lot or through, through business or something. So Yvette used to have the A-list, that's what it is, A-list preferred. She used to have A-list preferred, she doesn't anymore. So we have to like wait for the time to flip and stomp on that check-in. So when we're leaving, I got on my phone and I think I missed it by a minute. And we both had B50, we had B50 and B51. Now what sucks is the people who have one through 60 Nobody wants to sit in the middle. Why would you? Everyone's an aisle person or they're a window person. So what happens is by the time it's, well, let's, let's back up. So anybody who needs special assistance goes on first. That's any airlines. Then you do A, A1 through 30, 31 through 60. Then, and for those of you who travel with families, you love this. For people like me who are typically a business traveler, I hate this. Now, my wife doesn't mind because when she travels for work, most of the time she's by herself. Sometimes I travel with her, but most times she's by herself. So it doesn't matter if you're by yourself. What I'm about to say doesn't matter if you're by yourself. Unless you want a window seat or an aisle seat. So A1 through 60 goes. Then, then those families that are traveling. So mommy, daddy, and the three kids, or people with dogs, that's a lot on Southwest, pets, 
They all get to board. They have their own line. Then B can go. So then by the time you get on, all the window seats and all the aisle seats, with the exception of maybe the last six rows of an airplane, are taken up. Most of the time. So if that's like, I don't, it doesn't matter. We're, we're going to the same place. I say, it does matter. It matters because you run out of place to store your overhead. And when that plane lands, everybody has to use the restroom. It doesn't matter if you run out of the restroom six times in the air. For some reason, when that plane lands, you have to use the restroom. So the further back you are, the longer it's going to take to get off the plane. Most of the time, by the time you get on, you're now sitting with or just behind all the newborns, screaming babies, pets, all that stuff. So we, we get on the plane. And Yvette's like, I can, I can smell the restroom. I said, well, yeah, because we're three rows away from the restroom. I said, this sucks. But I could have paid $25 usually to guarantee each of us A1 through 15. But now they have business class, which is the biggest scam in the world. Because if you ever rode Southwest, flew Southwest, there is no first class. There is no business class. Every seat, A1 and 2 are the same as, sorry, row 1, 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C is the same thing as 34A, B, and C. Like there's no difference. There's no first class, none of that. But I could have upgraded our flight to Minnesota, business class, Southwest Airlines. For $700. Are you kidding me? F Southwest. Fortunately, on the way back, I was right on it. And I checked us in. And we were like A50. And A51. Which was better. We were to get on. Get our seat. We're somewhere in the middle of the plane. So as I typically do. Watch the movies. You guys know I have a movie reaction channel. Check it out. Get Real with J Reacts. I watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and this is the early 2000s ones. I had never seen this movie. This is the one with Johnny Depp. Have you seen that movie? That movie's weird. It's a little weird. I mean, it's Johnny Depp, and Johnny Depp can be a little weird. I like him a lot better as Captain Jack Sparrow than Willy Wonka. And it's funny because his haircut in the movie and his glasses, and he already has like a feminine face, especially in the early 2000s, with the makeup on and everything, and that silly hat. He actually reminded me, like there's a friend of mine that I won't mention, but every time they showed him in the movie, I thought about my friend, and she's a woman. I'm like, that reminds me of, hmm, <laughs> and it's, it's funny as hell to me. But the movie's weird. Everything from the, the elevator to the Oompa Loompas. Call me old-fashioned. I wanted to hear the Oompa Loompas singing Oompa Loompa songs. And I kind of expected it to be more different instead of pretty much a copy of the original with the exception of a few small details. It, was a, it wasn't a bad movie. I liked the movie. I actually liked the movie. But it was weird, too. The ending, it just kind of dragged on and got weird. Also watch Breathe. My wife told me, you got to watch Breathe. This is a good movie. Jennifer Hudson, uh, Common, 2024 movie, I think. Maybe it's 2023 movie. Basically a, apocalyptic. The, there's no more oxygen. So you have to live in, indoors and have this special breathing system. But she said it was good. The thing is, I tell her to watch movies because I say they're good and she never watches them. My son has to tell her to watch it before she watches it. But if I say watch it, she doesn't want to watch it. I got good movies. She doesn't bat very high. But I know why she watched the movie. It's got people in it that she likes. We'll just leave it at that. But that movie sucked. And I, I didn't want to have this bias because she already thinks I'm, I don't like black people in black movies. But that's not true. I like Common. I was watching it because I like Common. Jennifer Hudson, I've seen her in some stuff. She's fine. In this movie, acting sucked. There's a girl who played her daughter. Not a good actor, but she's a girl. She's, she's probably a teenager or someone in their younger 20s. So people playing kids, I'm not that hard on them. 
adults. I just you, and it's got the the woman from all those. What's those? What's that damn movie? Underworld. No, not Underworld because that's Kate Beckinsale. Resident Evil. Yeah, it's got the girl from the Resident Evil movies in there, and she's one of the main characters. It's actually got a few surprise characters in there that, that uh, I'm shocked that they took the payday because uh, it wasn't a very good movie. But you never actually felt fear on the survivor side. You never felt f- endangered by the people that are trying to steal what this other people have or the people who claim that they're one thing, but maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I'm speaking in generalities because I don't want to ruin this incredibly terrible movie for you in case you ever watch it and decide it's a good movie. But it's called Breathe. And it sucks. Last thing I'll talk about is sitting at my cousin's house, we were watching YouTube. And I know we're on vacation watching YouTube. It was in the middle of the day, kind of a filler between things like shooting guns, which we did, a couple shotguns. He had two automatic shotguns, or semi-automatic, I guess. They reload themselves. You load them all at you know, the beginning, and you don't have to pump them. Non-pump action. You don't have to pump them. Then he had a pump action shotgun, a uh, competition pistol, 22, which is little. Uh, he had a 357. Did he bring his 357 out? I don't know. He had some special Smith & Wesson, stagecoach gun, some other, like a re- some fat revolver. They were nine millimeters. We took him up to the Gulch on four wheelers. He didn't want to drive, so she rode behind me. Great time. And we shot off a bunch of rounds. Good life. So anyway, the, we were watching the Fast and Furious video, and it's it was stepping through every single movie, the cars and the stunts. And much to my surprise, many of the movies, they use real stunts and real cars. And not as much CGI as you would think. And I knew this, but... I think it was Fast Furious 6, where they dropped the cars out of the airplane. That was real. I didn't finish watching the show or the video, so I don't... I think we stopped just before the stupid submarine one, where the submarine's chasing the cars across the ice. But when they're dropping the cars out of the plane, that was real. And then the runway scene, maybe that was 6. I don't know, 6 or 7, but the you know the, the world's longest runway scene where they had kind of built this rig to look like an airplane and they they had some lighting issues so they had cars that rode with them that were used only as lighting and then in one of the other fast and furious movies i think it was one or two they built a car on the back of like a flatbed pickup truck and they had the rig the camera rig and everything. And so like Paul Walker would be sitting in this car and somebody else was driving the car. So then you can get the full acting of the actors as the car was slide. It's like they were sliding, but they weren't really controlling the car so they could focus more on acting. I thought it was pretty brilliant how they did it actually. Like that's genius to me because sometimes you watch these movies and a lot of times with people in the car, they're really in a car in a green screen room and everything around them is CGI. And you can kind of tell when you're watching a movie that they're not really in a real car on the road. They're sitting on a, in a car and on a set, you know, this isn't the seventies. Like obviously remember watching the old movies and they're driving and you can see like this background going up and down. I think Quentin Tarantino does it all the time just to be funny, but you're like, that's a movie screen behind them. They're not really in a car. And you know that, but a lot of the Fast and Furious, a lot of the newer movies, that's a real background, but the car is sitting on, like I said, on the, on the flatbed. And of course, Fast Five, which I knew this, but you may not have the famous scene where they're pulling this giant safe through a city. If you didn't already know this, it's actually a truck inside the safe that's all chopped up to where it's a super squatty truck. And there's a guy in there driving it, and he's got slits on there that are tinted, which obviously you can fix in post, post post-processing. But they're back there driving the car. They're back there driving the car, so it looks like the two chargers that Dom and Brian are driving are pulling 
And so that's that's super cool. And then the freeway scene, they actually had some rear they had a couple of those cars and then they had some fake ones that were underneath the bank vaults that were heavy as shit that they actually rammed into cars. So it was it was pretty cool how, how they make those type of actions. So that was pretty much my Labor Day weekend in Minnesota. And I don't know if we're going to go next year. I want to go every year, but there's just so much travel going on. I have some travel coming up as well. Like I said, we're going to Vegas soon. Uh, if you're in listening in the Arizona area, Southwest Speed Festival is coming up in September. And that is Ravi Tomlin with We Don't Lift Racing. Try to support that show. It's going to be down at Casa Grande. Um, the Podium Club. It's going to be down at the Podium Club. Maybe I could get him on. Maybe we'll get him on this week for next weekend's show so he can kind of talk about and preview his event. Ravi hasn't been on this podcast in probably three years since I used to do the Builder's Corner. And he talked about safety because he has a store and that's what they sell. They sell anything safety with tracks. He's a real NSX track guy. Goes the circuit, travels, drives the shit out of his car, breaks all sorts of records. Future Collector Car Show, October 13th. I am going to be the MC again. And I was just told that this time, Bogey is not going to be there, so it will be a solo act. You imagine me sitting there talking nonstop for hours. Everybody's going to leave the show. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Maybe get some people up there to talk about their cars throughout the course of the event. And it'll be a good time. This will be my third time being an MC. And this is a Barrett Jackson show. So that's cool. Maybe some opportunities in the future. And then, of course, NS Expo is coming up in October as well. And I will be gone for two weeks. So I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do with the podcast. Maybe get some interviews uh, lined up and loaded and edited and ready to go. If you're still listening to the show at this point and you haven't already done so, especially if you're listening on Spotify or YouTube, it would I would really, really appreciate it if you go to Apple, scroll down to the very bottom of the show and submit a review. Be nice, be kind. But the one review that I've got recently is the first review I've gotten in a year. And I know many of you have been listening as new listeners these past six months. And so those kind of help the algorithm and kind of move me up a little bit higher. Overall, I'm four and a half out of five star total. So that's fine. Give me a three. Give me a four star review. Give me a five if you absolutely think I deserve it. Don't give me a one. Sign to my DMs if you want to give me a one. We'll talk about it. But I would really appreciate it. And it does help the show. So that being said, I want to thank Right Honda and Right Toyota, Toyota of Huntington Beach, Claremont Toyota, and Gardenia Honda. Which, by the way, they never come on and tell me to talk about Hondas and Toyotas. Never. Maybe I should. Maybe they don't listen. But they probably sponsor the show, and I'll take it. Also, fourwheelonline.com, Cell Shop Wireless Services, Auto Cannon, officially licensed Honda and Acura gear. You know, with all those sponsors, they're all car sponsors. So now I feel like I have to talk about cars. Can't forget Patreon business supporter Kuya Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida. I will see you at NS Expo. Power Construction of County, Michigan. Automotive Specialty Tool out of Owings Mills, Maryland. I will see you at NS Expo. Big House Small Home Design out of Ashburg, Virginia, Ashburg, Virginia, Traverse City, Michigan. Shaping Success with West Changersley out of Boise, Idaho. If you want to help the podcast upgrade, <laughs> leave me a review or you can also join the patreon for as little as zero dollars a month get access to bonus audio as well as show swag there is podcast patreon specific swag special thanks to mark stoneman Catherine cox eddie ramos richard grace byron jones bo jung Oscar drew bunkley and yasu chiba representing from japan email the show hard parking podcast at gmail.com follow me on instagram at j finning join the hard parking violations facebook group or the hard parking channel follow me on tiktok where I get naughty and crazy. I can't grow without you telling the world how great this show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I think I'll talk to you all next week. Shut up!